Would you join me for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Father, help us to be receptive to the thoughts and challenges that come to us through prayer, through the printed page, and from the world around us, and help our leaders to find the best solutions to the problems that we face. We ask this in your name, amen. amen. In compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, this is to announce that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided, also pursuant to the 2014 bylaws, rules, and regulations of the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Burlington, Time shall be set aside on the agenda for the receipt of public comments. Public comments will be received with respect to agenda items prior to board consideration <coughs> of resolutions to be adopted. An additional opportunity for public com comment will occur later in the meeting. Public comments shall be limited to five minutes per speaker. Unused time may not be transferred to another speaker. Persons may speak once per public comment period. I direct the deputy clerk to enter into the minutes of this meeting, this public announcement, and the, and, and the advance written notice of this meeting. Freeholder Belgard. Here. Freeholder Donnelly. Here. Freeholder Howarth. Present. Freeholder Schwartz. Freeholder Schwartz. Joanne, Joanne you there? still there? Okay. And we'll try to She's get She's in back. and out, right? And now. and yeah. Director Gargano. Here. Let's probably look for a motion for approval of minutes of May 14th. So moved. Motion by Freeholder Howarth, second. I'll second that. Questions or additions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. And at this point, we'll move on the presentations for the Health Department Poster Contest winners. That's the speaker, though. It just says, now she's on hold. If you first watch, you push. Now she's on hold. No, you Thank you both for coming this evening. Uh, the Rowan County Health Department, as part of Health Starts Here, um, had a poster contest 2014 as an awareness poster contest, and we chose um, out of the Health Department two winners, which we were very excited about in two different age categories one for third to fifth grade, and one for sixth to eighth grade. And so for the uh, third to fifth grade, we'd like to award this to Meredith. Meredith, you hold up your posters. You can show the group. Uh, they always uh, come back, don't they? Very good. <laughs> and for the sixth through eighth grade award, we actually am going to award this to Selena. Selena, do you want to show them your contest poster? Wonderful. Very good. Very good. Said with love. <laughs> nice. Clearly, they At this point, we're going to move on to item F, which will be the um, public comment on agenda items. Um, at this point, I'm going to um, lead off the um, public comment on agenda items and just have a quick thing I'd like to read. To like, I'd like to make the first comment on the agenda items. As there is 
items on our agenda tonight pertinent to the issue, let me take the opportunity to address the recent released homeless count. While the count's numbers need to be put into perspective, of those counted, most are in temporary housing and 21 are without shelter. These figures are under no circumstances acceptable. For a while, the vast majority of these folks are not on the streets. They are in limbo, too often living from one temporary housing option to the next without prospect of permanent place to raise their families. As a county, we can and we must continue to do better to end the vicious cycle that has far too many children growing up in motels, forced to switch schools districts each time they relocate, and lacking the support and the stability necessary for success. Efforts to address this issue have already been taken. We undertook a comprehensive reorganization of our human services department to serve the most vulnerable more effectively and efficiently. We reallocated social services from the homeless funding to provide case management services for a rapid rehousing pilot. As part of our broader effort to be more quickly to move people from transitional housing options to permanent homes, we supported the development of a new permanent housing through home funds, directly establishing 44 new units with the leverage of a total of 214 units, in, in addition to over 16 million on housing services. Grant funds have been used to support the housing counseling, homeowners er, preservation, and first time home buyers programs. Still, the point in time count numbers remind us that our efforts are not enough and I refuse to let us be in the same position a year from now. For two years, we have been working with the state to gain permission to shift grant funding toward our permanent housing focus and away from the use of motels as temporary housing options. It is time for an answer. Tonight, I'm calling on the state to issue us the necessary voucher and to do it now. At the same time, I have directed staff to fast track the creation of short term, quick turnaround emergency shelter centers strategically located to serve as a point of entry for individuals and families in need, as called for in our 10 year plan. Research and evidence has proven that emergency housing doesn't end homelessness, only permanent housing does. And our efforts will continue to be aimed at decreasing the time of self dependency. Furthermore, we will maintain our commitment to preventing homelessness whenever possible, making Bronx County an affordable place to live and a prosperous place to work can both prevent residents from falling into dire straits that lead to homelessness and help pull people out of it. To this end, our aggressive workforce investment initiative remains a top priority of our administration as Brio Director. Stable jobs lead to stable homes, and we will do everything we can to ensure that both are available to every resident. I have met with staff and our partner groups and look forward to providing additional updates in the, in the months ahead. Finally, I will hold all of us all accountable for progress and will update the public regularly as we work aggressively to provide stability and assistance to as many of our residents as we can. And with that, I'm going to turn back over for public comment. Mr. Milanes? Later. On. Later. Later. Thank right. you. Mr. Stern? We'll go later on. Okay. Later on. I'll go now. Sir. Agenda items. I commend the freeholders <coughs> your your initiative. And quite simply, it's not enough. But I'll deal with that later. In reference to agenda item number five. Could you please explain clearly what the $535,000 and uh, $537,645 how it's going to be utilized to better Burlington County homes? There's multiple uses. I'm going to ask Anna if you, I know we had a, a memo on that. If you could just go through that, please. administer. It's, it's funded across a spectrum of service providers, 
and um, and it's it's allocated in accordance with applications that were submitted for funding through an RFP process. So can I ask you a question here? Yeah, but go ahead. Doesn't it appear that the, the, the reality of duplication of services through grants to other programs that are providing services for homes? Uh, case in point, you had a code blue shelter in Bell for Lyco, it was an approved code blue shelter, but because they were not able to deal with the population that visited that code blue shelter, the code blue shelter closed before the completion of the winter which led to a problem for a gentleman known as Mr. Robert Taylor, who had used that code blue shelter previously, but was not able to use it once it closed, and unfortunately was found dead in Burlington County Jail. So through these grants, isn't it possible that there's duplication of services, one, and two, what are the qualifications of these folks that are receiving the grants? Is it, if I may? Paul. Oh. Yes. What we'll have is what let what we got you got like five questions. Oh, you didn't know I'm not arguing. Fair, fair, question. fair questions. I'm just saying we're gonna take them actually. take them a piece at a time. So Anna, why don't we take them a piece at a time? Uh, I mean, you you address the one see my concern is if you had code blue shelters that are designed to serve the handicapped and you have personnel that cannot interact with it, I'm sorry, I stand corrected. That are designed to service the homeless population. And they're not certified and trained to deal with that population. Then there's a question of quality services that they're being provided, and that happened in Delanco this past year at the Dominus Methodist Church when folks in the community complained, and they ended up closing the shelter before the completion of, of their commitment. So my question is, isn't there a better way of disseminating those funds through a community of opportunity where you have an on-site facility with trained professionals Paul, and Paul, that maybe Paul, for satellite Paul, centers? Paul, the these are it's, not, it's a good question. I'm going to, I, I, there, if, if there's items that Anna can look at and answer, but I think what we're looking at is a policy question that the board has done. I mean, it's not a decision that she she has okay. decided I'm on. Sorry. So, so I'm what sorry. I... And understand where you're going with it. I mean, and I think there's a difference of opinion. I think where the county is looking to keep some of it spread out, where your feelings have always been, as long as I've known you, of having that one central location. I hope I can further convince you because and I, I see the validity in both. And, and I appreciate your the um, your opinion, and I listen to it every time. And and, and, and we do we're, we're moving in the right direction. Behind the eight ball, and and I understand. Thank you. Is there anything else you would like? To say? I may comment on your question regarding the qualifications of the social services for the homeless contract. No, I'm not talking about Paul, social services. Paul, answer. But that's the idea. All right, if you had folks addressing. that were volunteers, and, and this is in that regard, thank Paul. you. You had volunteers for Dobbins Methodist Church, which was a code blue shelter. What, what qualifications did those volunteers have? That's, that's outside of the purview of the item on the agenda, but I will comment that our code blue sheltering system is operated through a network of faith-based providers that shelter under the hospitality guidelines. Our contract is with the United Way of Burlington County as the code blue broker. They then enter into agreements with independent provider shelters who are trained in emergency sheltering operations by the Red Cross prior to taking up operation, but we do not directly contract with those providers as part of our system. Thank you. Uh, in reference to uh, Paul, I'm sorry, your your five Paul minutes. Up. Yes, they are. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on agenda items? Seeing none, we'll move on to our resolutions. I'd like to make a motion to approve items <coughs> one through six by unanimous consent. So moved. Motion by Gargano, second by Howard. If there's any questions, comments on any of the items, we can. You guys are really having a tough time over there. Uh, it's, it's a hot mess. <laughs> this was a disaster. I'm just going to assume that's true. Joanne, <laughs> All right. um, I, I actually do uh, would like to uh, discuss items one and two. Please do. Okay. So for the bills, I don't have too many tonight. Okay. Uh, page number seven, American Tower, Inc., 
power rental renewal, $3,509.57. Can you tell me what that is? This is for the public safety tower rental. Oh, okay. I couldn't figure out what, the, what, what it meant just by tower. Okay. Uh, page 11, Bordentown driver training, $11,970. It's to a workforce investment board job training where folks are sent to get, I guess, their CDL. Oh, right. Okay, great. And then uh, other than that, the only things I have there on, on page 16 and 17, the Burlington County Bar Association, I need to refuse myself. And page 21, Camden County College, I need to refuse myself. This just isn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, that's what I have on the bills. Okay. <laughs> do, do go run, yeah, two? go to number okay. two if you, if you like. All right, so I have, a, I have a number of questions. I don't know uh, who I should direct these to. Mr. Troy. Yep. I, I tried to do what I think this Okay, great. So item number three. Well, let me just ask you a general question. It looks like we are awarding some uh, contracts to folks who have submitted proposals that are incomplete or missing in certain areas. Will those, uh, any items that are incomplete or missing be rectified prior to the award of the contract? O only if we're permitted to do that. There's certain things that cannot be remedied, but if there's something in there that can be, uh, Sharon Brockner, purchasing agent, if there's something that they can do, for example, if they didn't sign um, an amendment sheet or something, and we can rectify that before we award we will. But if they in some way change the bid itself or change the contract itself, right. then that is something that we cannot render. Sure, but I'm talking about like if it's, uh, for example, somebody failed to enclose the New Jersey business registration certificate or failed to include the home, hold harmless language, those things can be rectified. Yes. Okay, so that's sort of my overarching question there. More specifically, on um, item number three, the award of the um, vehicle forestry, forestry truck uh, at the price of 205142 It looked like there was a lower bid of 182800 Can you tell me why we went with the higher one or why it suggested that we go with the higher one? Could you, Joseph? Thank you. There was a material deviation between the equipment that was specified versus what the technical needs were of the camera. Okay. Great. On number six, for the pipe and fittings, high density polyethylene and non woven geotextile fabric, same sort of question. It looks like we're awarding it um, uh, based on a proposal of $110,000 or $110,294,000 compared to one that was $98,339.96. Can you tell me? But the footages were off. They missed linear feet the on their plan. bed. Oh, okay. That's one way to get cheap, just don't include so That's fees. right. The next one is number eight. It looks like we're uh, awarding The, the award is for $210,000, and it looked like there was another bid for $168,730. Yes. Actually, you're free the dollar about the same thing. Same thing there. I don't have there. specifics, but I can get this to you. Just not Dave Giselle's here. I'd rather, Mr. Giselle's here, so I'd like him to answer that question. Oh, okay. yeah, the contracts were accepted, and there was a, a contract that disputed to actually alter our contract, which ended up in a violation of the, oh. of the contract. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> We have a lot of contracts on tonight. Uh, yeah, that's all I had on those. Okay. Any other? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Abstentions, just as I noted. As noted. Thank yep. you. Real order, Belgard? All right. I would like to move for approval resolution number seven. Second. Motion by Freeloader Belgard, second by Freeloader Donnelly. Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you, Director. At this time, I move for unanimous consent of resolution items numbered 8, 9, and 10. So, motion by Freeholder Donnelly, second by Freeholder Howarth. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Freeholder Howarth? Move them Thank all. You, move them all. Because she's not on the line. Move yours and Freeholder Schwartz's. 
Uh, the, the free Monica, thank you. Should move, uh, okay. Freeler Schwartz is if she's not here. Okay. <clears throat> thank you, Director. At this time, I'd like to move unanimous consent. The resolution is number 11, 12, and 13. Motion by Free Order Howard. Second. Second. Second by Free Order Belgard. Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? At this point, I'll move Freeholder Schwartz's numbers 14 through 18. So Motion by Freeholder Gargano, second by Freeholder Howarth. Question? Um, is there just an explanation on number 16? I know that that was not um, conference, just exactly what that is for. Yeah, the win wham um, it's, it's for the Health Department for the Environmental. It's actually a technology improvement or actually a whole new technology in the event that the environmental inspectors would automate their inspections that are done currently in the field on paper and would automate it to the fact that they do it on a tablet and not to it on paper any longer and be more efficient. Great. Thank you. Any other? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Questions from the press? I have a couple. Okay. Item number four. Can you clarify uh, what your memorandum of understanding is? You mean the contract? And if so, what do you look for specifically? Um, that may be something to see. Yeah, it would be, um, it's basically for, I guess, the financial dollars and if we're, that are coming from HMFA? It's, it's actually um, for the partnership with HMFA for the administration of our homeless information system portal. So part of it is the dollars that are paid to HMFA out of our HUD dollars, um, but more of it has to do with the responsibilities of the continuum of care and the staff and of the HMFA staff in providing technical support to our, our uh, vendors to be able to um, to, to enter information into the, the HEMIS software. So they oversee the HEMIS software system. So this is a formalization of that relationship? It's an updating and formalization of that relationship that already exists. Okay. But the terms are being laid out okay. more clearly. All right. Um, number eight, was there something unusual that prompted the need for supplemental funding, or is this just a routine? It's a routine grant application, but sometimes additional funds become available. That may be the case here, but I can't tell you that. It we was have, the case. Yeah. It was the case, yes. yeah. So some additional, additional, additional grant funding becomes available, but one, we still are obligated to go through that grant process again and then resolute to accept any additional grant funding that's available. Okay. And my last question was item number 14. Um, what specifically is the amendment? Uh, I'll, I'll handle this one. The, the price per inmate is being reduced to $83, but in return, the county is getting a guarantee of a minimum of 30 inmates to be housed within the jail facility. The goal would be to house more inmates, but Gloucester County agrees to guarantee to pay us for a minimum of 30 for each day. So previously, there wasn't that guarantee? That's correct. They were not able to offer that guarantee previously. And what was the price before that? Uh, $100. No, per, sorry, per, per inmate per day. Thank you. Oh, I didn't see you over there. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of your assigned seat, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to ask a question? It's not on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Um, last Thursday, uh, the hearing was held on the second hearing for the Joseph? Well, the reason we canceled it was because, as a resident had pointed out, we did have an, it, there wasn't a legal issue. We had a, what's it called, a transfer document that we had missed a, a building structures on. But then after talking to council and listening to some of the comments that were made at the first public hearing, I would recommend to the board that we no longer consider the transfer to West Hampton Township because there does not appear to be even a remotely clear path to what would be developed in terms of athletic fields in West Hampton Township if this, if this transfer were to take place. So that would be my recommendation to the board, but to answer your, and I guess the status from my point of view, 
But in terms of the hearing, I think I answered that first. Thank you. Joe, can I ask a question about that? If, if we proceed with your recommendation, we need to pass a resolution. We don't vacate the prior resolution. We never actually resoluted the transfer. There was no agreement of sale, right? I know that there was an agreement of sale, but what was, uh, what was our resolution from December? It was a conference. I don't know that we were, we never resolved to move it, transfer it to them. No, I don't believe so. Okay. If we move forward with hearings again, we'd re-advertise. We'd have to start over, but I'm not. Okay. So nothing was formalized. It was just a conference. Right. It was not a conference. I would have to see if we had ever memorialized it. We had done anything. It would only be to start the transfer process. Right. But there was nothing done authorizing the completion of the sale. Okay. Good girl. I'm going to have to get you over here in the seat. I can't even see you. <laughs> I got a foot. All righty. We'll move on now to public comment. Um, same set of rules as we had before. We'll go Mr. Milanes. If you signed in, we'll run you in first. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, th I think we're when, when, when we left it I think you were going to reach out to your the congressional delegation to see where we at you know you could set up a meeting with them uh, yeah. have you got an opportunity because because ultimately if it's something that's going to be on the base they're going to have more of a direct impact of they, they, the they, they nothing for us there. I don't think they're going to close the base yeah. Right now, you know, I went there yesterday and things don't look that good. And uh, I got a young man here, he's one of the police there. And uh, he tried to help me whatever he can, but he just is starting the service. But what I like to do, to find just a little place where I can call him home. And uh, I don't think it's clear going to go for that right now they got too many problems. They can take care of people like me when they, they go to the hospital. And uh, you you read in the paper, the paper did a good job and put it some articles out that some people die because we don't have the care for them. And uh, we serve the, our country and at least we serve to take care of all our people somehow. And the Congress they ain't doing nothing, Senate they not doing nothing. We're going to have to fire some people and send some of you guys back there. Maybe you can help <laughs> do something better. And thank you. Thank you, Whatever sir. you can do for us, I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Steve Stern. <coughs> Steve. Thank you. Uh, Steve Stern from Mount Laurel. Um, I just want to point out uh, that um, I just paid my quarterly estimated tax to the state. Uh, and, and I'm glad to do so because I think our government provides essential services. Uh, but I kind of resent when my tax money is used for political purposes. I think the, the most egregious example of that is um, when Governor Christie has these uh, self-promotion YouTube videos and these so-called town halls. And I'm hoping that the county doesn't follow suit with that uh, with the upcoming election. So I would just like to suggest that the freeholders who are up for re-election in November, uh, not use the county-funded Facebook page or social media, uh, either their names or their images, for 90 days prior to the election uh, so that, uh, you know, we're, we, the taxpayers, are not funding uh, elections. So um, I just hope you take that into consideration. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? I see your hand. I'm just going to give everybody one more shot. Don't see anybody. Mr. Bracey, please. I wonder if he was referring to the gentleman before. Which is really nice, but I don't see any Democrats on it. Uh, I was going to take a totally different approach tonight. I'm not either. But I must tell you, Bill Gargano is deeply impressed with what I see as a change of uh, viewpoint concerning our homeless. 
Sir, you'll recall I placed in your hand over five years ago citizen serving the homeless community of opportunities proposal. Uh, I hope that you read it again and compare it with the 10 year plan and you'll find out, sir, there's no comparison. I've worked with the Salvation Army's Community of Hope in Sarasota, Florida. It's one of the two prestigious homeless centers in the, state, in the United States of America. The program that citizens serving, citizens, uh, serving the homeless in Burlington <coughs> County proposed through their community of opportunity is based on two of the premier programs in the United States of America. Salvation Army's Center of Hope and the uh, Community of Opportunity in San Antonio, Texas. It's not a question of whether these programs can work. I've worked in the programs. I volunteer every time I go to Sarasota every year. I know the programs work. You are needlessly wasting taxpayers' money when you could utilize citizens serving the homeless community of opportunity. We were so close, and to correct you, sir, I'm not on the Board of Trustees, so I'm an active member, always have been, so that we have an understanding of that. It will serve the homeless population, which I've been talking about this for over five years, so now I hope this Board understands what I have said has been on time for the last five years. To have over 1,600 homeless folks in this county is without justification. 635 being children. I was blessed. When my father tried to kill me, I had an opportunity. I had a safe haven in North Kitchen, Philadelphia. My sisters had an opportunity in safe haven in Catholic foster homes. <coughs> the Burlington County Fielders provided my mom with an opportunity which brought our family together when she accepted a position as executive director of Buttonwood Hospital's nursing staff. Or director of nursing, that is. So I know what governance can do in Burlington County. It served my family and me quite well. This is not an issue of discussion anymore. I can assure you, if you were to sit down with the purpose and actually read that proposal, sir, that I, I put in your hands over five years ago, and compare it with your 10-year homeless plan, you will understand exactly what I've been trying to share with this body for over five years. This fine lady in your department is doing her better best. It's not good enough. The needs of the homeless are too diversified. You need a center where all services can be provided on site 24 seven. Now, are there homeless that will come from the woods? Maybe, maybe not, but you have the Christian Caring Center. You have Reverend Pites, Salt and Light. They are two of the premier homeless advocates in the nation. These programs, you have Revolution in Riverside. There is absolutely no reason why you can't provide four satellite, 24, no, four satellite programs now on an eight to eight basis for those homeless folks that will not come out of the woods knowing they have a safe haven they come, can come to if they so choose. These folks are well versed with dealing with the homeless based population. Good intentions aren't good enough. I work with Meals for Love. I volunteer my time with the homeless population. But there are some folks that cannot handle the big, how the homeless folks appear, some of the things they say, and they end up leaving meals of love. You cannot staff programs for the homeless with folks that are good, with good intentions. You need to have qualified people that understand the base population. I assure you, if you put politics aside and put people first, and you move me tonight, Builder director. I, I was coming tonight with a totally different approach, trust me. And I'm going to put that on hold until after the election. But I'm coming here tonight with my arms. Can I please finish my statement? Sure, I didn't say a word to you. I'm coming tonight with my arms open. I have come to you on bent knees over the last five years. I have devoted 25 years of my life to this base population. I am telling you right now, this is a time in Burlington County to make this work through a private public partnership. You have Lockheed Martin, you have Comcast, you have Lando Lakes. There are a number of corporations in Burlington County. The Salvation Army Center of Hope, their major partner 
is a cable, cable station in Florida known as Suncoast. I know this is a better way. You've spent between 12 and 14 million dollars on a population. Wind it down. And, and you're still, you're still having an issue by simply creating one 24-7, 365 community of opportunity for the homeless. And two, four eight to eight satellites. Revolution is one. Christian Caring Center is the second one. Kent Pikes has already proven his merit. That can be a third one. At key places in Burlington County, you will use your money in a most effective manner, but most importantly, you will be, you will be providing the real needs for a homeless-based population. I know this will work. I've seen it. I've worked with the population in an environment such as this. Paul, 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 Paul. I'm, 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 you need I, to I just have 15 seconds. Ken Pikes and, and Madeline Mearshell have proven themselves over 35 years. All I'm saying, put politics aside, let the players come into the room, let them show you how this private-public partnership can work, and let's, let's stop playing this game, because it's not fair. I was lucky. I cried myself to sleep from three, three and a half to five. Well, what about the 635 Burlington County children in the homeless? What about them? Thank you, Paul. Anyone else? Oh, how you doing? <laughs> Hello. Hi. How are you? Are you an award that needs to sign in? This is Eleven Desky Springs Township. I just had a question in regard to our tax. If you want to do a tax appeal, I believe it's up to April 1st, you can only do it up until April 1st or something. And what's the difference between a tax appeal at your township and a tax appeal for the county? They said you can do it here also. I think your first step is the deadline for the county. Yeah. I think you missed the deadline for the county. Oh, it's not actually the county. It's the tax. It's the Board of Taxation. It's, the board of taxation. it's a state office at the county houses. Um, I think April 15th was the deadline for them, but I don't know. I, I, they are directly across the hall here, okay. across this courtyard. So you don't know when the cutoff date is? I thought it was April, April 15th. 15th. So you April have to 15th. do it next before next April 15th. Well, in the meantime, they're going to charge me more money, so I have no recourse. I mean, they sent out a little piece of paper with an estimated that it might cost more. They didn't give you the ratio. They didn't tell me what I'm being taxed on house or property. I mean, um, you know, land. And so that piece of paper is like an extra thousand dollars a year, and I have no recourse except pay it until next year. Are you are you, be, are you in a rebound? Is are they rebounding the town? Revaluing? Well, they did that last year. Yeah, last year or the year before. Yeah, and then they're going to change the ratio so they can get the money. And um, well, theoretically, they say the revals are supposed to be dollar neutral for the community. No, it's just because they need the money. Because I told them that the one property that they charged us for. Was only I had three bids for my cousin's property. They said it was only all the contractors said it was one worth fifty thousand. I went to the township and I told them that. So they have it at value at a hundred thousand. So when the reval came around, now I got a new paper that says it's one hundred sixteen thousand. And I went to them and I said because I wanted the taxes cut half for her, so she's not wealthy. She's and it's really hard for her to pay taxes, and so she gets it sold. And I said, so you up that another 16,000. I said, I wanted you to cut it in half, because it's only worth 50, so she only had to pay the 1,500 and not over 3,000. I said, now you've got it up to 116,000. And then they started to do uh, an appeal, but then in the appeal process, they only give a certain amount of time. And if you don't know exactly what it's going to be yet, because I don't have the ratio and all like that, I don't feel that's fair. And you know, to not be able to appeal until you find what it is, I won't know until August 1st when I get my bill. That's exactly the figure that they came up with. So I, I think once they give me a figure, then I should have 30 days or whatever to appeal. Well, at any time, you can go into your township, though, and deal with the tax assessor. If there's a if there's a problem with that, they can adjust. I know they can adjust pieces of it down or something like that. If there is an issue that, that can be identified. So I can work with him? I, I would be my first step before I even file an appeal here is to go into the township and have that conversation. They they have If you can get to their tax assessor, they have the ability to 
to be flexible if it's proven the needed and you know i'm not saying that they will or they won't but if there is a there's an issue that is a road has arisen and you can show them what it is they do have the ability to do to deal that All of this information is on their website as well. If you go to the website, on, website, it's website. on their on the taxation. Taxation. Tax on their website. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Seeing none. We'll move on to comments from freeholders. Field of Thanks. So um, I just want to mention that on I think it was Monday of this week, I attended the uh, GI Go Veterans Job Fair at the Aloft Hotel, um, which had a great turnout. Representatives from the state and a number of different employers were there. And I was wondering if this is something that uh, we as the county can get involved in in the future. It's just a, a great way for us to reach out and, and um, let some more of the veteran community know what we do as a county. So. I talked to the uh, director of the GI Go Fund, and he said that if we'd be interested in being involved in the future, he'd certainly like to have us set up a table. I think that would be excellent. Okay, I mean, great. between workforce development or the or veterans, so there's a lot of good things. Yeah. 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 Great. And then, uh, other than that, all I have to say is Happy Father's Day to everybody right. this weekend. Real <laughs> Howard. I have nothing, director. Thank you. Real Howard. Me neither. I'm just going to be real quick, and I'm going to I'm going to talk to Paul. Paul, I appreciate how you came in tonight. I mean, I think it's a good conversation. I think as we move through this process, there's things that we all can learn from each other, and I think if we we can sit down and we can listen to each other. I mean, I don't know if we're ever going to agree on everything, but ultimately, I think everyone up on this freeholder board, and I think everybody that's working in our in our departments are trying to do the right thing to do what's best by people that need help. And we're trying to have a safety net, and we're trying to find a way not to just give them a safety net and put them in a hotel, but we're trying to give them the ability to get out of that hotel and live in a house or live in a home or live in an apartment or live wherever and be self-sufficient. And that's going to take programs to give them those abilities and those tools to be able to do that. So I appreciate that, and I honestly believe you. I just hope you let the experts that have devoted their lifetime to this population that are in this county to help you reach the solution because it's there. And we will, and, we're, and, and we'll be working on it. Thank you. And, and so I just wanted to leave you with that. And at this point, I'd be looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Freeholder Howarth. Second. Second by Freeholder Belgard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye, sir.